Um, I'm, I'm happy that there's no election. There's, there's nobody on the side of the government that won an election. I didn't, I didn't want an election. This is my fourth minority parliament. I know those, the minority parliament can, can work when you know, people from different parties decide to work together. And I'm, uh, again, I'm an optimistic. And I, I was convinced that we could go through and keep workings for, for Canadians. Um, I'm not happy about the irresponsible attitude of the conservatives that decided to put this motion there to jam government, to paralyze the government, disrespecting the, 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 the will of, of Keynes when they created the committee. And so happy that there is no election, unhappy that we had to spend a whole day yesterday debating this instead of debating what we can do to improve the lives of Canadians. So that is Government House Leader Pablo Rodriguez addressing the events of the day in the House of Commons, namely that the government has survived a confidence vote. The vote was on a motion put forward by the Conservatives to create a special committee looking into the WE controversy. The NDP, the Greens and independent members of Parliament voted with the government to ensure its survival. The Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party is speaking right now. Hi, Bashi. Uh, good to be with you. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm here and I'm happy to to, uh, to chat with you about what we've just seen. Okay, my apologies. I thought it was a press <laughs> conference that you were giving. I, did, I can I do a press realize. conference. No, no, that's okay. I'm much. I'm happy to, to ask you questions. I guess I'll start off. We just listened to Mr. Rodriguez talk about what he viewed as a success for the Liberals today. Your your motion was clearly defeated, 180 to 146. Do you regret putting it forward? Not at all. Uh, I think what we saw today was just how arrogant and entitled this Prime Minister is in that he would literally put the health and safety of, committee, of, of Canadians ahead of the best interests uh, of, 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 he would put the best interests of Canadians uh, behind what he wants to be able to to do, and that's protect his own uh, self-interest. So, um, you know, it was uh, it, it's, it, it was quite an interesting last couple of days. All we were asking for was a committee to be set up. We've done that before. We've actually won a motion whereby a committee was set up, and it was not a confidence motion. It was just a, a committee uh, wanting to ask the government a few questions and so seeing him make this a confidence motion threatening an election in the way that he did uh, really was quite telling. So let me just pick up on something uh, that you mentioned there. You said that you just wanted to set up a committee. The, the Liberals take issue with that, right? They, they did not think this was just an innocuous committee. And in fact, you did want the committee to delve into years, for example, of records involving the Prime Minister's mother and brother. Do you see how the Liberals would find that inappropriate and something that they wanted to fight back on? Well, uh, those who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. So it's quite interesting to see the great lengths the Prime Minister and the Liberals went to, and we'll see how what they continue to go to in order to hide information from uh, from getting out to Canadians. We already know that there's uh, a, there was there was a lot of inappropriate things that went on with the the contract that was going to go to we. We've heard most recently of other contracts going to former Liberal insiders, uh, and and so there's a lot of questions that Canadians deserve the answers to. So no, we don't regret doing our job. Our job is to hold the government to account. Our job is to ask tough questions. We didn't expect them to like it, but we certainly didn't think that the Prime Minister was going to be uh, that arrogant in, and, and say that he was going to make it a confidence motion just in an attempt to uh, to cover himself and uh, and protect his own interests. But, but certainly, Ms. Bergen, I, I understand the point you're making when it comes to the Prime Minister, even his wife, if there are public funds at use. But when you're talking about someone's uh, mother and brother, it's not like this was public money paid to them. The NDP offered a compromise, right? Let's remove that. Let's try and find a, a middle ground so that this type of committee, the work that your party wants to go ahead, can go ahead, but isn't, you know, outside of the norms of what a committee would normally look at. Why wouldn't you engage in that sort of compromise? It was the Prime Minister himself that really has set the tone for this and set these boundaries, so to speak. He, who is included in who he believes is entitled to the favors uh, that insiders with Liberals get. Who gets those favors? Who gets in the lineup to be able to get Liberal favors? And who's out of the lineup? That's really what we're asking. And it's really the Prime Minister who has set those parameters. 
And Canadians deserve to know because there seems to be one lineup for Liberal insiders, those who are connected to the Liberals, whether it's uh, because they're family or friends or donors. And then there's everybody else who really uh, gets put to the back of the line. So that's clearly up to the Prime Minister, and we have to do our job. We have seen the lengths that this man and this government will go to with their arrogance and their entitlement, and so we're not going to stop doing our job. Vashi, we have another Opposition Day motion tomorrow. We want to see, uh, and we've been trying to get some information from the Health Committee for the last several weeks. The Liberals have been blocking us from getting documents uh, around why the uh, early pandemic warning system was shut down, around why aren't we getting rapid testing, why is everyone else, uh, many, many other countries getting rapid testing, but Canadians aren't. We have serious questions. We don't expect the government to like them, but we certainly expect them to answer them and not use it as a confidence motion and an excuse to get out of answer. So I, I there's more point. there's more motions coming I, forward. I take your point, Ms. Bergen, but respectfully, that, that doesn't answer my question. Why couldn't you seek answers to those questions through the model, for example, that the NDP put forward? Why did you have to remain so stuck to a version that included delving into the records of the Prime Minister's mother and brother? Vashi, we saw the Prime Minister cancel Parliament, lock the doors, not let parliamentarians come here, he prorogued Parliament. Then when we did resume, we started committees. We've seen the Liberals filibuster for hours and hours and hours reading nonsense into the record in order to avoid answering questions. So I don't think that we can give the Liberals the benefit of the doubt that they are just going to easily and willingly provide answers uh, as to what the Prime Minister has done and where some of this money has but, gone. But the NDP's committee would have looked at all of that. Well, you'll, you'll have to see why the NDP made the decisions that, that they, they have made. My question is I, why I you didn't I'm, engage in, I don't in discussions with them to arrive at some sort of compromise. Well, we did. We, we changed the name of the committee. That seemed to be a problem for the government. But I think what's clear, I, I think when you anybody reasonably looks at the last couple of days, the opposition did our job. We asked reasonable questions. We asked for a committee to be set up. Even if our motion had been defeated, that, that, that was something that absolutely we would accept. But the fact that the Prime Minister made it a confidence motion is what's really telling here. Not whether we want more questions answered than what the NDP want answered or whether there were questions uh, that the Prime Minister wanted to answer or didn't answer. That, that's all, that's part of Parliament. That's part of democracy. But the the Prime Minister would put his own interests above the health and safety of Canadians during a pandemic. That's what's really telling. Okay, I have to leave it there, Ms. Bergen. I'm out of time. I appreciate your time very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. The Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party, Candace Bergen. If you're just joining us now, I'm Vashi Capellos. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, and this is a special extended edition of Power and Politics. We were just talking with Ms. Bergen about the outcome of today's very high stakes vote in the House of Commons. The Conservatives, her party, had put forward a motion to create a committee that would very specifically look into the WE controversy. The Liberals said that the parameters of that committee were unpalatable to them, and so they decided to make it a confidence motion. The opposition parties were not happy with that, but ultimately the Greens and the NDP voted to support the government against the motion because they said Canadians were not at a point where they wanted to head to the polls. We've got a lot more coverage tonight coming up of the outcome of this vote, including the leader of the NDP, Jagmeet Singh. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Ms. Cavellos. Uh, Mr. Singh, do you have confidence in this government? Uh, I have confidence in our ability throughout this pandemic to be able to fight and win some major victories for people. So we've been able to get things done that the government wasn't able to do. So it's not that I, I, I trust the government to deliver, but I trust that we have been able to make the wage subsidy better. We've been able to bring in CERB, uh, to bring in paid sick leave for Canadians, and to stop the Liberals from cutting the help to people in the midst of a second wave. So I'm confident that we can keep on fighting for people, and we've shown that we've won for people. But ultimately, it was your party's expression of confidence yet again that enables this government to stay in power. Well, most recently, uh, we can point out the most recent confidence motion was the bill which we fought for to bring in paid sick leave for Canadians and to stop the cut uh, that Liberals had proposed. That was something we fought for. We negotiated it. We obtained it. And all parties supported it in a confidence motion. Uh, the confidence has been tested before, and it has been, in that case, all parties, including Conservative and Bloc, that voted for it. Before that, there was a throne speech. Uh, we've shown it again and again that we can fight and win for people. 
But in this case, uh, what it was really about, what became really clear was that Prime Minister Trudeau was looking for an excuse to go to an election, and we did not want to give uh, Justin Trudeau an excuse to go to an election. We voted against an election in the midst of a second wave, proudly so. It is not the right thing to do with numbers rising in Ontario and in Quebec, the two most populous provinces. We fought for, we're going to continue to fight for people, and that's what our focus has been throughout this pandemic. Essentially, though, Mr. Singh, you didn't just vote against an election, you voted against what the concern Conservatives proposed here, right? Well, and let's also talk about that for a second. The Conservatives would have you believe this is the only way to get to the bottom of the spending scandal with the Liberal government. Well, that's not the case. So far, ministers have testified, documents have been produced, the Kielberger brothers testified all at regular committees, the Ethics and the Finance Committee. So today, we tabled a motion that we will be calling additional witnesses at the Ethics Committee. Charlie Angus, our MP who sits on that committee, will do that work. So it's pretty um, rich for the, for the Conservatives to put it out there that this is the only way, when the reality is up until this point, the accountability that we've been able to bring to light has happened at the regular committee. So there's so nothing you... special about what the Conservatives were trying to do that we can't still do at the Ethics Committee or the Finance Committee, where we have been doing this work. Two things then, w were you always going to vote against this motion? And, and to your point on what's being done in the other committees, that would be true prior to prorogation. But what we've seen over the past few weeks is an effort on the part of the Liberals to filibuster and ensure that that work actually doesn't get done at the committees. Well, filibustion could happen uh, in any situation. Anytime there's any other MPs, they can filibuster. Uh, we've got the majority uh, on committee and we can vote. But yes, uh, the Liberals could try to delay and, and try to distract from their scandals. But we have tools right now in Parliament to hold the government to account and we're using those tools. And, and most importantly, we've been able to fight to deliver help to Canadians. And at this time, the Liberals were looking for an excuse to go to an election and somehow blame the opposition. And I was not gonna let that happen. There's no way we can let uh, Justin Trudeau use New Democrats or the opposition as an excuse. If he wants an election, he can just go ask the Governor General for one. It's a wrong thing to do right now. And I've been very clear, I'm not looking for a way to force an election. I'm looking for ways to fight for people and deliver the help they need while they're very worried about what this pandemic means for them, their families, their jobs, their kids, their loved ones. That's what our focus has been. Why didn't you then just abstain, you and your party uh, colleagues abstain rather than vote against the motion? Well, we, we didn't want to leave anything to chance here. I mean, the, the, the Liberal government, Prime Minister Trudeau were posturing and it was all about a, a big ego battle here about trying to make this into a, a, an, a, an excuse for an election. They made this a confidence vote and we didn't want to leave anything to chance so that you know someone didn't turn on their Zoom camera and then we were in, in an election. That would be irresponsible to do. We believe it's not the right thing to go to an election right now at the federal level with Ontario and Quebec being the way they are right now, the, the numbers being where they are right now. Now. So we focus very clearly on saying uh, we want to stop uh, this, this game, this farce. We're not going to go to the brink and we are going to vote against uh, going to an election and we're not going to give Justin Trudeau an excuse. Did, did, did the Liberal strategy here, though, as much as you condemn it, ultimately work, given that they not only survived this but were able to secure your party's support and it appears make no concessions to you? Well, they weren't looking for our support. Uh, the, I'm convinced that uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was looking for a way to go to an election. The Liberal government was looking to go to an election, and we stopped that. We're not going to let them go to an election just because it suits them when Ontario and Quebec are faced with massive numbers. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to go to an election, and they wanted to blame it on the opposition. We said no to that. We said no to going to an election. Uh, and we are going to continue to find accountability. This is not the only way to do it. New Democrats are very uh, persistent. We're going to keep on fighting to make sure Canadians know the truth. There's many ways to do that, and we've tabled a motion to get more witnesses to testify around some of the spending and the decisions that this government has made so that we can prevent it from happening now and in the future and focus all our resources towards helping Canadians get through this tough time. Does your desire to avoid an election have anything to do with the fact that your party can't really afford to fight one right now? And will that impact decisions you make in the future? You're clear that you don't think Canadians want an election. You don't want an election. Your party doesn't want an election. Uh, you know, if you can't afford an election in six months, and you, are you still going to support the government to, in order to avoid that? 
Uh, not at all. I mean, we, we've shown again and again that we can fight elections with far less resources than other parties, and we can do so uh, very capably. And I'm not worried about that. But I am worried about this pandemic, and I'm worried about people that haven't got the help they need. I'm worried that Canadians living with disabilities still haven't received the small sum of support that the, we were able to finally force the Liberals to, to give to them. Uh, we're worried that students who are at the heart of the WE scandal were promised $900 million, still haven't received any of that. And, and we're going to continue to fight for them. We're, we know that parents are worried about their kids and being able to get childcare. We know that healthcare is something we need to invest in. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We're going to focus on getting that work done. Does that mean that you will support the Liberals, though, in further confidence motions as long as you deem that work necessary to be done? Well, our focus in terms of how we are going to make that assessment is can we continue to fight and win for people? If we can continue to deliver the help people need, we're going to continue to find ways to do that. Canadians sent us to Parliament with the minority government. They are telling us to find ways to make this work. We are going to always try to find ways to make government work for people. And if that means fighting and, and pushing the, the government to do that, we are ready to do that. That's our goal. Uh, if it comes to a point where we, we can no longer deliver for Canadians, there's an impasse, we're open to any option. But our focus isn't on finding ways to tear the government apart or ways to plunge us into an election. Our focus is on getting that help to Canadians. Okay, Mr. Singh, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time this evening, as always. Always. Jagmeet, Jagmeet Singh is the leader of the NDP. That vote took place this afternoon, and the, both the NDP and the Green Party, uh, as well as independent members of Parliament, ended up supporting the government and voting against the motion, which went down to defeat and ultimately ensured that uh, the government survive another day and that we're not talking about an election right now with, I should say, the power panel, who have been very kind with their time and spent the afternoon with us. Amanda Alvaro of Pomp and Circumstance, Summa Strategies' Tim Powers, Kathleen Monk of Ernst Cliff Strategy Group, Group and Sherelle Evelyn, Managing Editor for The Hill Times. So we had just uh, been discussing the various party positions and then I uh, interviewed uh, Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP. Uh, Tim, ultimately his support, his party's support of the Liberals, which they say of course is not of the Liberals, but rather uh, against the idea of an election, ensured that uh, that the Liberals would have the support that they needed and that the, the confidence vote would, would go in their favour. Uh, what stuck out to you from, from what you heard from Mr. Singh there? The, the trouble he's having <laughs> making the symbol of the vote separate from his language, right? Um, so people are going to look at this tonight. They're going to hear Mr. Singh, but when they read the vote tallies, they're going to see he voted with the Liberals. And while they may agree with Mr. Singh that uh, they're glad there's not an election, it's still a bit confusing. Uh, it's really interesting because Mr. Singh seems to be, and I think that this part is smart, co-opting some of the language of Mr. Layton. Uh, and Mr. Layton managed minority parliaments well, particularly with Mr. Martin. But Mr. Layton was actually able to get things when circumstances were tough. Now, Mr. Singh did get something in a previous confidence vote, but it doesn't look like he got anything here. So his actions don't meet his words, and that, I think, is confusing. Whether that matters in the long run, I don't know, but he does have to explain why his actions are different than his words. Kathleen is frantically moving her arms mm. around, so I'll, I'll let her <laughs> respond to the... I mean, Tim has a point that he, the NDP was able to secure a lot of things, I think, through negotiations in the past, but... But in, in today, it's pretty clear today, you know, th as Mr. Singh said, it wasn't like they were asking for anything of the NDP. They didn't, there was no negotiation, but no concessions were secured. And I'm literally getting text messages saying there's filibustering going on in finance right now. <laughs> but to Mr. Singh, and just to dispute what Tim just said, so Mr. Singh is setting himself up as the leader in parliament who will get things done for Canadians. So maybe Tim forgets this because he hasn't had to use the wage subsidy or the CR, the CERB or the CRB, but it was in fact Mr. Singh's party who worked to get an extra $100 a week for a total of an extra $400. So it could be $2,000 a month for the new CRB. He fought for the sick day um, uh, EI changes and, and, and others. So he has, he thought for students and in terms of the measures, financial programs that were made available to students. So his decision making today and his de team's decision making today was all about, oh wait, 
do we just throw everything up, put everything on hold because the Liberals won an election and, and pause everything for two to three months to like, till we, you know, go and knock on doors or virtual doors or have Zoom meetings with constituents, put everything on hold. And that means the new wage subsidy legislation that will have the higher subsidy rate. That means the rent that small businesses need, that rent subsidy. Or do we, in fact, say, no, we're going to vote against this uh, crazy idea of an election, and we're going to continue to work. And so he is, he is in a way, positively setting himself up to be like, no, I actually am going to try to have faith in the Liberals, that we're going to try to actually get some things done for Canadians. And that will extend beyond the bills that we're expecting to come to Parliament, but also trying to hold them to account on things like childcare, hold them to account on things like pharmacare. And he's done that. He's a record. Maybe Tim forgets that, but he will continue to do that going forward. I get all that, but I but at the same that the beginning, but yeah, no, no, no way, and yeah. and yeah, no. Tim, Tim did say they had got some wins in the past. I guess Sherelle, the, the 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 only problem with that argument at the end of the day is because of what happened today, and ultimately because the Liberals survived that, they're almost in a stronger position. And, and so whether that, you know, whether that cooperation or collaboration that, that their hope, you know, the NDP maybe hopes for comes to fruition, I think there's a bigger question mark over it because the Liberals have almost buoyed their positioning within Parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could look at it. You could look at it that way. I mean, this is a question that the NDP, you know, has to grapple with. How much and how long uh, can they continue to support the government um, to, you know, get the help for Canadians that Kathleen outlined, um, you know, before it starts to actually hurt them? Because at some point, people are going to mm. start looking at the NDP and saying, you know what, you keep propping up this Liberal government and the government might not be working in the best interests of everybody, but you keep propping them up because, you know, we can get a few dollars for Canadians. And after, after a while, I'm, you know, when it comes to something like, you know, anti-corruption, uh, how, how, where, where does the balance, where does the balance lie? Where does the line get drawn? And so it, it might start to hurt them in down the line if, if people look at the NDP and just say, well, they're just always going to go with the government. So why are we even bothering with them when we can either vote, when we can vote for liberals, we can vote for conservatives, we can vote for greens. The NDP aren't really, you know, proving their metal as, as a party, despite the gains that they are actually getting for the average person. Yeah, I guess, Amanda, it depends on the gains. Because to, to both Tim and Kathleen's points, there, there have been substantial gains, I think, for the NDP as far as those mm -hmm. negotiations have gone mm -hmm. in the past. And there could in the future. But that's why I kind mm -hmm. of ended my interview with Mr. Singh asking, like, how long does this go on? Are, are we to expect you to support the Liberals in perpetuity mm -hmm. uh, just because you, you don't think this is the right time for an election? I mean, the pandemic kind of complicates all of it, right? Because it is a pretty mm -hmm. tough time to have an election. Yeah, well, and I think the Liberals have illustrated that they're willing to work with parties in order to get some of those gains through. You know, does it look better for Canadians when this parliament can work together, where concessions can be made and where things can be made better in order to work for Canadians? That's the point. And, and I think that the message from the NDP and from the Green Party was very similar to the message from the Liberal Party. We have important things on our plate. We have things that we have to move forward. The wage subsidy, looking at a vaccine down the pipeline, we have to be prepared for the second wave. There are all the things that we talked about in the throne speech. That has to take priority over hijacking parliament. Yet again, despite the fact that we've been through ethics committee, we've been through finance committee, we're going to talk about the WE charity and potentially a contract with the prime minister's mother that has nothing to do with public funds instead of talking about things that Canadians actually want us to talk about. So, you know, I hear what Mr. Singh said, but I think that what most people will take away from today was that the NDP backs the Liberals to hold out against a committee that would hijack Parliament from doing the job that it should be doing on behalf of Canadians. I, I, I take that point, but I wonder also, Tim, if they will take into account that it was the Liberals that framed it as such. <laughs> well, they did. I mean, uh, the, the, <laughs> meaning they're the ones who made this, you know, a possible Prime election. Minister did say, right? I mean, the Prime Minister did say, and the, the government did say they were going to make it a comp comp confidence motion. Excuse me, should be a competence motion as well. Uh, and the government has the power to do that. I mean, the government <laughs> elevated the stakes here, right? Like that's why all of this. I go back to the main point we started with has been so silly. Um, uh, the, the important part is to find a vehicle for account 
accountability through all of this. They're all trying to do it. Uh, I suspect I'll give them that credit, but they couldn't. Maybe if there's a return to normal, Vashi, we saw for the first time in a number of months all parties generally acting with strong partisan reflex in this whole period over the last few days. The other thing I'd add is I guess we're also getting back to a bit of normal because these flare ups do tend to happen uh, with minority parliaments. And we haven't really mm -hmm. had one significant because we've been so mm -hmm. consumed with the pandemic. So maybe we're getting closer to normal. Actually. I'll take any normalcy that, that you want to offer. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.